What's up guys, Amel here back in the studio and today I want to talk to you about the importance of organizing your projects. Now this is something that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about really in depth and this is something that I also didn't personally think about much for a long time when I first started producing and my projects weren't that big, it didn't really matter, you can kind of get away with not having super organized projects, but once you start getting more tracks and more automation clips and your projects become like 80 or 100 tracks, that's when it starts getting very, very important that you actually keep your projects organized first of all, and also have a consistent workflow that you can just jump into a project, know how all your tracks are going to be laid out, know how all your channels are going to be routed, it makes your workflow much, much faster, and there's a lot of reasons that it's very important to do that. First, let's talk about a couple of those reasons and then we'll actually jump into FL Studio and I'll show you exactly my workflow, how I route all my channels and a couple little inside secrets that helps me with my projects. Reason number one, and I just mentioned this, is keeping your projects consistent so that your workflow is consistent every time. Now, when I first started producing, it was just all about making music. I just had these random ideas in my head and I would jump into FL Studio and sometimes I would throw my drums at the top, sometimes I would throw my synths at the top. My projects were only like 15 or 20 tracks, so it didn't really matter. But if you can keep your projects consistent where you can jump into FL Studio or whatever program you're using and be producing in a consistent way every time, it's just going to make your workflow so much faster because you know, okay, my synths are going to be at the top, then I'm going to drop in my pianos under that, and then I'm going to have my basses, whatever your workflow is, as long as you keep it consistent, that workflow is just going to be so much faster and so much easier to do every time. The second reason to keep your projects organized is knowing where everything is. If you don't have a sort of order or an organization that you keep your projects in consistently, it's going to be really hard to open up an old project and try to find where things are. It's like, oh, maybe I put my synths here in one spot, maybe I routed it like this. You just have no idea. And the more complicated your projects get, this just gets harder and harder over time. For instance, I will open up a project that I haven't worked on for six months. And if that project's super organized, it's very easy to just say, oh, I know my drums are routed here, I know my synths are routed here, I can solo this, I can work on this, but if your project is disorganized and you have no idea where anything is, you haven't worked on that project in six or eight months and you're just spending like three hours trying to like mentally reroute and like where's this and where's everything going and it, it just makes it way harder unless you keep your projects organized. The third reason to keep your projects organized, and this is something that's become important to me just very recently, and that is for collaborations. I've been working on a lot of tracks with a lot of other people, and that's when you really start to see if your projects are disorganized that things fall apart very quickly. For instance, I'll do a bunch of work, add a bunch of elements to a track, I'll send it over to the guy I'm working with, he adds a bunch of stuff, sends it back, and suddenly you're just adding all these things and you don't know how his workflow is and he doesn't know how your workflow is. And so if you don't keep it organized, things just get crazy all of a sudden and now you fill up all of your mixer tracks and now you don't have any space to work and now all your drums are messed up and your synths and you don't know what automation clips are affecting what. So I think for me that's one of the most important things. If you can keep your project super organized working on collaborations with another person, two other people, whatever, it's going to keep it much, much easier over time. With all that said, let's jump into FL Studio. I'm first going to show you one example of a recent track that I've been working on so I can kind of do a broad overview of how I keep my tracks organized and my personal workflow. And then at the very end, I'm actually going to open up a brand new project that someone just sent me and kind of really quickly go over so you can actually see my process of taking a project that's not very organized and make it into something that's organized in my personal workflow. Without further ado, let's jump in and get to work. Okay, so we are in FL Studio now, and this is actually a remix that I've been working on recently. So it's one of my most recent and up-to-date projects. As you can see down here, it's 83 tracks. So it's not a huge, huge project, but it's pretty big. You can see there's a lot of automation clips, there's a lot of samples, and then there's synths and stuff up here. First, let's talk about workflow, how I keep everything sort of arranged in the playlist, and then we'll jump into channel routing and some of that stuff. So for workflow and keeping your projects organized in the playlist, you can do this any way. You can have your drums at the top, you can have your synths at the top, it doesn't matter, just whatever makes sense in your head, just as long as you keep it consistent along each project. So that way you're not having your synths at the top one time, your drums at the top the next time. I'm going to show you how I do it personally and if you like it, you can do the same or you can do it differently. 
the way I always do it is I start with my vocals up top. For whatever reason, I just like having my vocals up top. That makes sense to me. So here's my main vocal right here. Under that, if I have any harmonies or vocal effects, like here I just did a little vocal chop and any automation clips, that's all gonna be at the very top. What I do next is I put my lead synths. So any leads, right here is my main, then I have a lead harmony. Those are all bunched together. Right here I have some little reverses and little one shots and stuff. Those are all related to the leads, all part of the leads. And again, if I have any automation clips for the leads, here's a cutoff automation, here's a volume automation, anything that's related to the leads, those are all going to be bunched together. What I do next is I have any pianos, any chords, any guitars, that all is what I put directly under my leads. Again, you can do it however you want. This is just what makes sense in my head. So leads, then chords, I have, like for instance here, I have some pianos, this is for the break. So that's all for the break stuff. Here's some ambience, little guitar riffs and stuff I recorded. Right under that, I have my drop chords. So here's stuff for the drop. I typically will put anything sort of related to the chords. Like for instance, here's some drones, here's some ambience. I keep all my chords bunched together. And again, automation clips are always anything that's affecting that thing, I keep it next to each other. I've seen some producers where they'll have their automation clips, for instance, all at the bottom of the project. And for me, that's just super confusing because then you're trying to go to the bottom and things aren't named properly and you, you have no idea like what's linked to what. So I always, if I have an automation clip that's affecting a synth or whatever that instrument is, I always keep them bunched together. Under my chords, I always put my basses. So for instance, here's some little one shots and stuff. That's all good. And then down here, I have my basses. So these are the drop basses. These are like my mid and high basses. If I have any little bass or one shots, I always put that directly below the basses. So for instance, here's like a little bass fill. So that just goes directly under the basses. And then I keep my sub bass under the high basses. So I guess really what I'm doing with all my instruments is I'm working from high to low. I have the lead synths are at the top, then I do my chords, the basses, so it's pretty much going from like high frequency to low frequency. That just makes sense in my mind. And so typically the sub bass is going to be the last instrument of my synths of any of my instruments is going to be at the very bottom. The only thing that's related to the instruments that's going to be below the sub bass is automation clips. So I have a couple automation clips right here. These are all going to be related to either just the sub bass or maybe the mid basses too. And that's kind of it for the instruments. So once I have all my instruments laid out from leads to chords to basses, then I will go into my drums. My drums aren't probably as organized as my instruments. Sometimes I'll switch up the order of my drums depending on what style of track it is. For instance, this is a progressive house. So I have some rides and stuff that I normally wouldn't have in like a future house track, but I always start with my kick. So that's the first thing is my kick. And then depending on, like I said, what genre it is, I'll either have rides or something that's like always on the beat with the kick. Or if I don't have that, then it'll just jump right down to the clap. Once I have kick, cymbals, claps, then I'll start going into other stuff. So here's like some shakers, here's some offbeat percussions, and then only at the very bottom, then I'll do like my crash cymbals, my downlifters, my risers, my crowd effects, different stuff like that. Then at the very bottom, underneath all my synths, is where I like to put my automation clips that kind of cover either all the instruments or all the drums or anything like that. Any automation clip that's affecting kind of a big group of instruments or drums all at once. First, I have my uh, kickstart. This is my sidechain. This is an automation clip for my sidechain for all the instruments. Below that, I have actually a second sidechain. This is a, a different sidechain for just the break instruments. And then below that is where I start getting into automation clips that either affects the instruments and drums all together, or for instance, I have a couple automation clips, like I have a volume automation clip here that's actually affecting everything, including the vocals on the master. That's probably a little bit confusing right now, but let's jump into channel routing, and I think all those automation clips and stuff will start to make sense. All right, channel routing. <laughs> there's a million ways to do this, and I've seen a lot of really bad ways, and there's no technically right way, but this is the way that I've come up with that makes a lot of sense to me and makes my workflow a lot faster. The most important thing I want you guys to focus on is all these buses over here on the right and all these buses over here on the left. So starting over here, you can see I have instrument effects, I have drum effects, and I have vocals. Now the reason this is important is because any instrument 
that I have, whether it's a lead, whether it's a, a chord, whether it's a bass, anything that's not a drum is going to ultimately be routed to this track. So if I go here, you can see I have my leads, then my leads go to a lead effects, and then those lead effects go to this over here, which ends up routing to my instrument effects. Same with the chords. The chord bus goes to here, it goes to my side chain, and then it goes to my instrument effects. Same with the drums. Right here, I have toms, those are going instantly to my drum effects. I have a ride, those are instantly going to my drum effects. Literally anything that's a drum or effect is going to the drum effects. The only thing that's not going to one of those two channels, either the instruments or drums, is going to be the vocals. This might be super confusing, me talking about it, so instead of doing that, I'm just going to jump into a section in here where I can actually just kind of show you exactly how all that works. So first, let's just take a listen to the track, see how it sounds. And I wanna kiss you, make you feel all Right, so this is a good spot. You can hear, obviously, we have drums, we have instruments, and we have vocals. Now, the magic of this channel routing is that, for instance, I can go in here, and if I only want to hear the instruments, it's literally as simple as muting this, muting this, and all of a sudden, I only have my instruments. If I want to do the same, I only want to hear my drums, or I only want to hear my vocals. And I wanna kiss you, make you feel alright And obviously you can do combinations So let's say I don't want to hear my drums But I only want to hear my vocals and instruments And I wanna kiss you, make you feel alright It makes it super super simple to just go in there and hear little details See if there's any mistakes in your instruments or your drums, whatever it is So now here is where things get one more step complicated what I have going on here is both my instrument effects as well as my drum effects. You can see those both route to this bus, which I call my everything bus. Pretty much what that means is that it's everything in the track except for the vocals. So what this allows me to do is if I want to put an EQ, if I want to cut out the low end, I usually put like a, a high pass filter, stuff like that, where I want it to affect everything in the track except for the vocals, then I have all my effects like that. So then after my everything bus is where it goes one step even more complicated. I have my everything bus as well as my vocals. Those both route to the pre-master. The reason I have a pre-master, and this is something I would recommend to everyone having a pre-master, is oftentimes what I will see, and this is a default in FL Studio, I'm guessing it's a default in other DAWs as well. By default, everything routes to the master. So normally people will put their effects on the master, so they have their whole master chain just directly on the master. The big disadvantage of that is it's going to affect anything you put on your master, including reference tracks, including if you're working with maybe like doing a bootleg remix. These are a couple reference tracks I have in here. And as you can see, they're routed to no track, which is just the master. In a normal circumstance, if I put all my master effects directly on the master, that's going to affect it. So it's going to pretty much double up the mastering. It's going to take a track that's already mastered and then master it again. Put limiting on there, put EQ, whatever you have on your master chain, that's going to mess up the whole sound. And so what I've done in my workflow here is that I actually have a pre-master. This way, everything that's in my project that I'm building in the production, I can have master effects on here. I can have my EQs, I can have my limiting, all that stuff. And then I can actually have my reference tracks and play that without affecting that sound at all. Otherwise, you'd have to go in here and be constantly turning on and off your master effects, and that just becomes a nightmare. So hopefully that all made a little bit of sense to you. I know that was a lot of information about channel routing and all this stuff that maybe doesn't make the most sense. I think the best way to show you how this is done is I'm actually going to open up a project that a friend just sent me that's not organized right now, and so I can actually walk you through the process of taking that reorganizing all the things in the playlist, doing all the channel routing so you can actually see how it's done step by step. So let's close out this project, open up that other project, and uh, yeah, I'll show you how to do it. All right, guys, we are now in the new project. This is actually a project that my good friend Vegar sent over to me. It's a project that he started and I was gonna work on a few elements for him. You can see it's actually fairly well organized. It's not too crazy, I've seen much worse. He has most of the instruments up here, all the MIDI and stuff. He has kick here. It's not too bad, but uh, there's definitely a way that I would personally arrange it that's just a lot more concise. So that's the first thing. And then if we jump into here, you'll also see that some things are labeled, he has leads, chords, sub, but not everything is labeled as well as everything just goes to the master chain. 
And so there's a certain way that I want to route all the channels that I personally like to use, like we just talked about in the other project. So without further ado, let's start organizing everything in the playlist. Once we do that, then we can jump in and do all the channel routing as well. Okay, and that literally took like three, four minutes. Hopefully you guys can see here, this is looking a lot more organized. I've actually put a little space in the project, like here I've left some spaces just so it's a little more clear exactly where everything is. Normally I'd put the acapella at the top, but in this case, this is the original song, the reference track and whatnot. Then below, like I did in my other project, I have the leads and plucks, which is essentially another lead layer. I have my pianos and chords, so those are all my chord elements. Under the chords, I have all my melodic elements. These are just a bunch of samples like arps and drones and, and different things that relate to the chords. Down here, I have my basses, my sub bass, and then we start getting into all drums, percussion, stuff like that. Like I said, I always do my kick first. Below that, I have some build-up snares. I have the offbeat snares or claps. I have some risers, crashes, and effects down at the bottom just like we talked about in the other project. So that's looking a whole lot better. It really didn't take much time to do. And now we can jump into the mixer and start routing all the channels. So the first thing that I always do is I just go over to this side and I'm gonna start naming a couple of these here. We'll call this vocal. In this case, we don't actually have a vocal, but I like to set it up just in case I end up using a vocal. I'm gonna call this one drum effects. And I also like to make them a color. It doesn't really matter the color. It just helps make it easier to see. Name this one instrument effects, just shorten the name. So now I have these three channels, which I always use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control and select all of them. And I'm going to right click and say dock to and say to the right side. What this does is now I can scroll anywhere through here and these always stay on the right side. So these are always visible. And the second step here is we're going to rename two more channels. Now with these two, again, we're gonna select both, and this time we're gonna say dock to left. We're almost at the stage now where we can actually start routing the channels to those different buses, but there's a couple just really small steps to do before we do that. One of those steps is actually to make the pre-master our master. If you right click here and say file, normally you can say save mixer track as and save that as a file, but if you don't want to actually save it and then have to look it up later, you can just click and you can just drag it onto a new bus and suddenly every single effect is just dragged over over and it's all the same. The only thing we're gonna have to do now is I'm just gonna say rename. There we have it. Now we have our new master bus. We can go in here, we can say file and say default, kill all the effects there. And now we have a new master bus. Now that we've essentially set up our whole template, it is time to actually get to routing the channels. So first we know that both the instrument and drum effects, those are both going to the everything bus. We know that our vocals, we obviously want to go through the master chain, but not through the everything bus. So we're just going to route that directly to the pre-master. The everything bus, we need to route to the pre-master as well. And now we can just go through and start doing all these elements. For instance, the leads, that's an instrument. Instead of going to the master, now it's going to route to instrument effects. We can also do this with the chords. We can do this with the sub bass. We can do this with the bass. And we can also do this with the ambience. One other thing I like to do typically as well is just like in the playlist, I also like to arrange all my channels kind of in the order and so they're next to each other. So I'm just going to hold Alt. Then I can use my arrow keys to move this around. I'm gonna move it next to the chords. I'm going to move my bass like here. I'm going to move all these things over next to the leads. So that way all my instruments are just next to each other. It's super easy to see them. Now we can start working with our drum elements too. So we have our kick. This is going to go to the drum effects. I can take my snare and route that to 124, which is the drum effects. And then I can just go through and do that with all these other samples as well. And now that we've actually gone ahead and done that, if everything is working correctly, we should be able to go like this and just mute the drums and only have our instruments play. And same here, we can mute the instruments and have our drums play. And it works perfectly. All right, guys, well, there we have it. I went through and showed you exactly how I set up all my projects, how my projects are organized, how all the channel routing works and all that, kind of my mentality behind the projects. And then we've actually gone into the second part where I've showed you with a real project how I actually do that, some of the little secrets of the key commands and all that stuff to easily organize your projects. So I think that should be a pretty in-depth overview of how to do this all. Obviously, like I said, you don't have to follow exactly all of my steps. If you work in a better way, you wanna put your drums at 
at the top instead of your since. Whatever way just makes sense in your head, go ahead and do that. This is just kind of a general overview how to keep your projects organized. So I hope this video helped you. I know this process has helped me an insane amount just as far as how fast my workflow goes and stuff like that. Before I had my projects organized, it was just a nightmare, especially once you start getting into much bigger projects where, like I said, you have many, many tracks stacked up. I'm not gonna show you in this video, but there actually is a way where you can save a template. So for instance, when I open up my FL Studio now, I actually have all these channels that are already pre-routed, so I don't have to set that up every single time. So I may have a video in the future for that specifically, where I show you how to save a template and create a template and just have that. So every time you open up FL Studio, it's already there. But that's for a separate video. I'm just gonna leave it at this for this video. This video is already probably gonna be super long, so I don't want to take any more of your time. As always, if you have any questions or if I was doing something confusing in the video that you didn't understand, feel free to write me a comment down below. Or if you want, you can DM me on Instagram, although I do have my notifications turned off on Instagram most of the time. Also, if you found this video helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing more content like this or more music related stuff. I post a lot of different remakes and just everything music and production related. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate all the support guys and I think that's it. So I will see you in the next one. Peace.